Pressure is growing on uh, Labour's front bench to back a second Brexit referendum. It's well known that some in the Shadow Cabinet are open to the idea. One of those who perhaps remains a bit more sceptical is the uh, Shadow International Trade Secretary, uh, Barry Gardner, who joins us now. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank I want you. to start off, though, with the NHS, because we've yeah. heard from the Health Secretary, uh, Matt Hancock, uh, about the uh, government's 10-year uh, plan. It's all about what they're going to be doing with the £20 billion that the Prime Minister promised the uh, NHS for its 70th birthday. What do you make of their plans? Well, look, I, I'd have more confidence in their 10-year plan if the five-year plan that they announced uh, in 2014 had actually been delivered on. It hasn't. Um, we now have a situation where there are 2.8 million people um, who are waiting more than four hours at a &E. uh, When we left office, that figure was 350,000. Um, eight times as many people now waiting. Uh, at a &E. If you look at the cancer weights, the urgent treatment, uh, the targets that were set there, they have not been met. And in fact, 150,000 people now, I think in, in every month, actually that's not quite true, except for one since April in 2014, in every single month they've missed that urgent treatment for, for cancer patients. Uh, these are the things that are going badly wrong. You, you talked to Matt Hancock about the 100,000 vacancies in the NHS uh, and he said, oh well, there's a plan coming out for that later in the year. But actually if you look at what the King's Fund has been saying, they're saying that actually 250 potentially 350,000 vacancies are going to be needed to be filled uh, in the next 10 years. So we really are at, at a point where it's not just a, a matter of um, having a plan that says we will spend this much money, it's having the people who are there capable of delivering that. That human resource is so important. And of course it's then connecting that up with social care, which this government has done absolutely nothing of. At the same time though, it is not a good thing that the Health Secretary is talking about prevention rather than cure, about stopping people <laughs> getting to the yeah. A units in, in, in the future. Uh, of course, but, but Sophie, you, you will see that in, on the prevention side, what the government has done is it's precisely precisely taken Labour Party policy. I'm delighted they have, but they've taken Labour Party policy. Well, that doesn't it, matter, does it, who it, originally came it, up with it, the policies? It, it doesn't. I'm delighted that they have. Um, we need a much greater focus on prevention, but, but in that case, you've got to say, well, where is the front-loading of the money coming from? And it's not. Um, and it's also about the, the way in which, if you are not looking after the elderly, if you are not looking after the people with long-term chronic conditions, uh, and, and in ensuring that they get the social care, then actually they are in the, in the beds and they are part of a system that isn't functioning. Okay. We need people to be moving through from the health care to the social care that they need. They can't do that unless the resource is there. Now, I want to talk to you about Brexit. We had a yes. couple of weeks off, didn't we, over Christmas? <laughs> but, uh, we're back to, oh, thank we're goodness back to we did, business yes. now uh, with the votes coming up soon. <laughs> Pressure is growing on the Labour Party over a second referendum. We've had new polling out from the People's Vote uh, showing that the vast majority of Labour members want to see it, that actually it would, if Labour don't try and stop Brexit, then it will damage them uh, electorally. That's according to the People's Vote. But Do you, what, what's your feeling on a second referendum? Would you like to see one? Look, um, we took what, five, six hours at our party conference to get all the disparate views in our party together and to sit down and to talk to each other. And I think part of the problem at the moment is that people seem to be talking, um, they're, they're listening to each other, but only so far as they can then contradict what the other person has said. That's, that's why they're listening. Instead of listening to understand, what we did at our party conferences, we actually listened to all the different elements of our party. But and we came, of your party want a and we came, No, no. We came up with a very clear chronology, and that was that we would look at what Theresa May brought back, we would then, if she could not get that through, we would then say it is right that a government that cannot get its flagship legislation through, cannot command a majority in the House of Commons, that there should then be a call for a general election.
That is the quickest way of getting a people's vote, as you know. You can have a general election in four and a half weeks. OK, That's so less. if there was a general if, election... If it were, if, if it were a, a referendum, that would have to go to the Electoral Commission to determine what the question or questions would be. Okay. It would then have to have a 12-week campaigning period. It would, in, in all, the legislation would have to be passed, primary legislation. It would take much longer. So in so that case, we've, then, we've said if there is a general there election... A general election. Yeah. If there is a general election, does that mean it will be Labour's policy to have a second referendum? What we said is that at, the, at any general election, we, we obviously will have a manifesto to go into that. We would set out what we would seek to negotiate in Europe to try and deliver. So you try uh, to press on we, with Brexit? We, we, would try, we would try to actually get something that would reunite the 52% and the 48% of our country. Every poll that exists at the moment shows that our country is still deeply, deeply divided. It is the responsibility of government to try and unite the country, not to divide it. So do you but think if there was my, a second my referendum, own, my those own, divisions would deepen? Is well, that I, I, I do think that, but... I, I, I think the way of trying to, to tackle this is, for us, we know that the reason Theresa May has had such a botched set of negotiations is because of her red lines. If we, as a new incoming Labour government, were to go to Europe without those red lines, we know that we could get a different, better deal. And that's what we want to try and achieve. At that stage, it makes sense to go to the country and to say, here we are, this is what we've managed to negotiate. Um, this is the deal that we've managed to conclude because we don't have the same red lines as Theresa May. We think it's a better way forward. And then uh, it seems to me... At a personal level, what I would then say is that is the time that you would then say to people, now take a decision on what we've managed to conclude. I mean, some people would say that's chasing unicorns, to say that you could go to Brussels and get a better deal when well, Brussels has said that this is the only deal. No, 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 no. Unless you no, Brussels have not. No, no. Unless you, sorry. Unless you change the red lines such as it, on immigration. It, sorry. Brussels has not said that. They've said that what is stopping us getting a better deal is Theresa May's red lines. And a critical one of those, of course, is in relation to the customs union uh, and, and the way in which that impacts uh, upon the deal that she has had to construct. So if Labour's plan is to be in a customs union um, where you, we couldn't strike independent trade deals, you'd be out of a job, wouldn't you? Uh, well, no, not necessarily, but actually that is the least of my worries and the least important thing for the country. Um, what is important is that we would have a trade policy in which we and the European Union together would be able to determine the trade agreements that we then concluded. OK, so that is that is what our proposal is, that we would have a customs union, just like there is in Mercosur in, in, in South America, uh, where each individual sovereign nation is able to determine uh, whether a trade agreement that they conclude jointly with other countries should go ahead or not. The EU isn't going to give the UK a say in negotiating its own trade deals, though, is it? So it's not its own. It's... No, sorry. It, the EU... The EU... Um, would be in a position, and it's perfectly, in fact, it's perfectly possible under the, the EU's treaties, um, to have a situation where the UK and the EU jointly determine whether a trade agreement with another country uh, is beneficial. We cannot be in a position, and, and this is where our position respects the referendum result in a way that the, the, the Prime Minister does not. Um, we have said that we cannot be simply rule takers in this situation where uh, in a customs union the EU could determine that we were forced into a trade agreement potentially with America which was detrimental to our interests although perhaps beneficial for the rest of the EU um, we can't be forced into that position and that's why we've always said that a customs union that we would negotiate would be one in which we have a say we cannot be forced into that position that respects what people felt at the referendum, that they didn't want to be rule takers. And that's why we've put that in place. But if you look at what's happened in the backstop arrangement, that's not the situation. And that's, that's I think, why many people are so concerned about the backstop. OK, Barry Gardner, thank you very much. Thank you.